Hey everybody, it's Mr. Carr again. Today we'll be talking about 11.1 .1 day one, areas of triangles and parallelograms. All right, so a little bit of recall. Parallelograms, that's what we talked about last unit. That's a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. There's a bell, forgot about that, could have waited. Parallelogram, and uh, we also have a square parallelogram, parallelogram with four congruent sides and four congruent angles, okay? So that's important because when we get to our formulas, we need to make sure we understand uh, what makes what in terms of some of our vocab terms. So start with this, area of a square. The area of a square is the square of the lengths of its sides. So if I call this, let's say side S, and all four are the same, then the area of that is just S squared. That's it. So this one is pretty straightforward. For example, one here, find the area of this square. I know that all four sides are five. So I'm just gonna do this as five times five which is 25. I don't have any dimensions, so I'm gonna write units squared. It's one big thing about this unit. We're talking about area a lot, then you are going to be doing stuff like this where it's the, uh, it's the dimension squared. So we're not doing distance, we're doing area of the shape. How much two dimensional uh, space does this take up here? So it's 25 square units, all right? And so I mean square centimeters, square inches, things like that. All right, next one, an area of a parallelogram. So this is any parallelogram here. The area of a parallelogram is a product of a base and its corresponding height, okay? It's kind of actually related to a square because it's just the fact that base and height are the same there. So when I look at this and I talk about corresponding, well, that's spelled wrong. Let's spell that right at least, corresponding height, okay? Corresponding heights are the perpendicular heights. Okay, that's one big takeaway from this, this uh, lesson today. Height is perpendicular to the base every time. So if I have this looking para this parallel uh, this parallelogram here, if I call this my base, this is my height if it's perpendicular like that. All right. Now, <clears throat> before I get to my next example, I can actually do this another way because let's say I call this my base. Well, then I need to find the height that's perpendicular to that. So I can do it in, in different ways. So if I call this, I'll call this base two and height two here. It just needs to be perpendicular. That's the key, all right? So that's gonna get down here to this next part. And this is any parallelogram. So you've probably seen it with like rectangles. You have seen like with a re rectangle and probably even called it length times width. Well, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're just gonna call it base times height because that is any parallelogram. All right, so if I look at this one, again, height is perpendicular to the base. So I focus on nine, I look for what side is perpendicular to that one. It's weird, but it's actually four. Because if I try to draw this in here, like this, let's say, well, that length here is the same as this length over here, okay? So my height can be like kind of drawn outside the, the shape if I needed to. So in this case, it's going to be the base nine times the height of four, okay? And I forgot to write that down earlier, so let's put this here. A little shortcut for this as a formula, area equals base times height, okay? So I've got nine times four, that's going to give me 36, and I don't have any units, so I'm going to just say units squared. Now, as I was saying earlier, what if I did something like this? What if my base here is eight? Okay, well, again, I'm looking for the perpendicular part. Well, and since it's a parallelogram, I know this is eight, and this is my perpendicular part. That's the 4.5. So it should work out that I can do eight times 4.5 as well, which it does. I multiply those together and I get 36 units squared. Okay, so either way, it doesn't matter. Again, the key part, perpendicular. Base and height are perpendicular to each other. Next shape, area of a triangle. The area of a triangle is one half the product of a base and its corresponding height. Okay, so that formula looks like this. One half times base times height. And again, corresponding height means it is perpendicular. So if I draw this in here, that's my height right there. And this is my base is the whole thing. 
Okay, so I don't want to split this up and think of it as two little triangles. The base is the entire length on the bottom. The height is that h, and again, height is perpendicular to base. All right, <clears throat> solving for unknown measures here. So the base of a triangle is four times its height. That's what we're representing with this and this. We call height h, the base is four times that, we'll call it 4h. The area of a triangle is 50 square inches. So I'm actually, I know this information, and I can represent both of these. So I'm just going to plug that into the formula and see what I can find. So 50 is equal to 1 half the base, which in this case is 4h, times the height, which is, which is h. Okay. From here, let's simplify a little bit. I can do 1 half times 4, and I can do h times h. So 50 is equal to 1 half times 4 is 2. h times h is h squared. All right. Now I'm just solving it backwards, that's all. So I'm using that formula that set it up and solving this out. So 25 is equal to h squared. Now I square root. So h is equal to five. Now, when I look at the, uh, look at the problem again, it talks about the area of the triangle being 50 square inches. Therefore, if I found the height, that is just inches. Not square inches anymore, just inches. My base is gonna be four times, uh, four times that. So four times five gives me 20. And again, it's gonna be inches. Okay, so this is just using that triangle formula and working it backwards, that's all. Last idea today, and that's what's called the area addition postulate. Okay, <clears throat> area addition postulate states that the area of a region is the sum of the areas of its non-overlapping parts. So what that means is that when I look at this shape, okay, We've got a robotic vacuum cleaner can clean two square meters of carpet in eight minutes. How long, <clears throat> how long does it take for it to clean a carpet covering a room with the dimensions to the right? So I, it says the dimensions of the room talks about cleaning two square meters. That's area. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to first find the area of this. I got two options. <clears throat> Option one, I'm going to split this up into this like upside down L shape. I'm going to make it into a well, it's going to be a square and a rectangle. To get the dimensions of this square, I'm going to use the other numbers as clues here. So what I mean by that is, if I know the whole thing here is 9, because it matches up to here, and I know that going from here to here is 5, well, that means this has to be 4 to make that work out. The same exact thing happens this way. This is 9, and then this is 5 right here. Okay, so that's the same as doing this is five right here. So that leads this to be four right there to make that add up to nine. <clears throat> so as a strategy, the total area is going to be, I'm going to split up as its area of a square plus the area of the rectangle. Okay, so the total area is going to be the square, which is going to be four times four. My area of my rectangle is going to be nine by five right there. So nine times five for that one. So total area is 16 plus 45, which is gonna give me uh, 50, 61. And in this case, it is square meters. Okay, so <clears throat> that's my total area. The rest of this problem is finding out how long that this vacuum cleaner is gonna work for. So it has to do with this idea. This is a second concept. I can represent work as rate times time. Okay, for example, if I'm working in a factory and I'm assembling the woozits and I can put together five in an hour. Well, how many can I do in two hours? Then I can do 10. Like that's my work. I'm, it's, I got a rate. I can put together five in one hour. So how many can I do in two hours or three hours or four hours? I just multiply time times my rate. In this scenario, the work is covering 61 square meters. That's how much we want the vacuum to cover. The rate is the square meters per minute. So the vacuum is working at two square meters per eight minutes. And then we we'll multiply by time. Okay, so from here, I kind of like to reduce my fractions at, that's a two over eight. So I'm gonna rewrite that as one over four uh, times T. So for my time, I'm going to multiply four over one to both sides. This is gonna get rid of the one fourth here. I'm gonna end up with T as an answer. So if I do that, 
That's going to be 244 for time. Um, it just says about how long time it takes. It doesn't say hours or anything. So this is going to be 244 minutes. Okay. Uh, so that's it. There is another strategy that I want to talk about briefly, and that would be this. If I wanted to, for finding this, the area of this L shape, I could also do this. If you look all the way around, it's surrounded by this big square right there. In red, that's a nine by nine. So instead of finding my area this way over here, instead I can kind of think of it this way. Yeah, I'll give myself a I can take the total area is gonna be the area of the square, the big one, minus this rectangle. I still need to do this. It's a, it would be like having a piece of paper and cutting out a corner like this to make that L shape. So what I'm doing is I'm taking away that corner so I can actually, instead of just doing addition, I can also do subtraction here. Well, remember the dimensions of that rectangle is this is a four here, so that's a four here, okay? And then this is given as a five. So I can subtract the area of that rectangle. So in this case, the area of the square is the big nine by nine, so that's nine times nine. The area of that re rectangle is a four times five. Nine times nine is 81 minus 20, and I get 61 units squared, or sorry, not units, meters squared. Okay, so two methods of finding that area. So it depends on like you want to find this area addition. It just depends on how, how you want to work it. Do you want to try to break it up into smaller shapes and then add them up? Or do you want to look at it as a fixed shape minus these other pieces taken away? All right, that is it for 11.1. All right, we'll continue with more formulas in our next lesson. Um, that's it for today. So reach out if you have any questions. Take care, everybody.